Good morning. Awesome question. It's about colloidal silica, and I love that. So, question for today is, how does the nano silica of colloidal silica increase cementitious efficiency? Now, to dive into that, there is a wonderful author, somebody that I used to read uh, when I was in university, uh, when I first started learning about nano silica sized particle in a colloidal dispersion, uh, and this guy focused primarily on uh, something called accelerated cement dissolution. Uh, Bjorn Bjornstrom wrote a couple papers back in 2003 and 2004 where he was looking at the impact of a 3 to 5 nanometer uh, size distribution of particles, nanosilica size particles in a colloidal distribution, on A light and B light. So while it wasn't Portland cement like your ASTM C150 type 1, 2s, yada, 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 it was more the lab version of the chemical composition that makes up um, our, our, our parent material for our Portland cement. So our, our two main uh, materials in Portland cement that creates the calcium silicate hydrate or the superhero uh, concrete strength are our, cal our, tri our tricalcium silicate or uh, our dicalcium silicate, our A light or B light. Uh, our A light or tricalcium silicate is, uh, I believe it's hexagonal. Uh, you're going to see a higher degree of uh, that tricalcium silicate. It has a uh, higher solubility to it. It's got more surface area to it versus our dicalcium silicate, which is more rounded, normally found within the tricalcium silicate. And at the very least, it's going to be at a much lower percentage than the tricalcium silicate. And it's not going to be as soluble. So it'll react, but over longer periods of time rather than the tricalcium silicate, which initiates a lot faster, um, and that's what's going to give us our initial development of our uh, calcium silicate hydrate. And of course, the dicalcium silicate will give that to us over longer periods of time. Um, so what our nano silica does is um, threefold. So the major authors, I already mentioned one, um, was uh, accelerated cementitious dissolution. And what we found is, is because um, the, the nano silica is so small, it leads to some other mechanisms that I'm going to talk about. Uh, but those other mechanisms ultimately lead to a breakdown of those tricalcium and dicalcium silicates. And one of the toughest things that we have with Portland cement, for every one or cement particle when we drop it into our proverbial bucket, not only does it react out into the given space, but it also reacts into that anhydrous or unreacted cement particle, ultimately creating a diffusion barrier, which you know I call um, a M and M hard candy shell. It just makes it really hard for water to get through that diffusion barrier, barrier to that unreacted cement particle. So ultimately, we get into this position where we're not really using all of our cement particle, losing a certain percentage of anhydrous or unreacted cement that we might gain some of it over time, but getting this accelerated cement dissolution, we're effectively manipulating the molecular kinetics of cement hydration to draw more out of one cement particle. As I said before, effectively increasing that accelerated cementitious dissolution. So why does this happen? I said there's two other things that lead up to it. The first one is we are dealing with pozzolanic reaction. Um, where pozzolanic reaction is uh, recognized as that consumption of calcium hydroxide with that silica to create more of that backbone of concrete strength, the calcium silicate hydrate. Um, and because our, our, our particles are on the nano size, the surface area for that uh, pozzolanic reaction is so much higher, and because it's a smaller particle as a smaller electrical double layer on it therefore that silica surface area is going to kick off a lot faster there's a, pa uh, a paper written by Land et al back in 2012 where um, they illustrate beautiful beautiful illustration of how this as Land calls it uh, Stephen Land something to that effect um, calls it this calcium silicate hydrate seeding effect where you have this instantaneous pozzolanic reaction 
as opposed to your micro silica, your silica fume, even your class F fly ash, where that happens, but it's not an instantaneous effect. And if it is instantaneous, it's a very, very low portion compared to what you're getting out of the nano silica sized particles in your liquid dispersion. Okay, so that's item number two. Item number three <clears throat> is something called heterogeneous nucleation. And there is a wonderful, wonderful paper written by Jamal Jayalapan from Georgia Tech on, um, you know, the same concept that Bjorn Bjornstrom was looking at, you know, this accelerated cementitious dilution, but Jamal went after using this um, uh, inert, inert material. And he was using nano TiO2, which is not going to um, be incorporated or, or, you know, chemically uh, help out like, you know, silica-based material with cementitious hydration or pozzolanic hydration. So basically what we saw out of that research is the smaller the particle size distribution that Dr. Jayalapan went to, the higher degree of cementitious dilution reaction that he got out of the same cementitious package with the same water cementitious ratio. And what we have out of this is this, like I said, this heterogeneous nucleation where because the particle is so small and because it has a very small surface area or, or, or excuse me, not surface area or electrical double layer, it's called the goy chapman layer, force field if you will, other things will want to grow on top of it. So with all those things combined, that accelerated cement dissolution, the instantaneous pozzolanic reaction, and that heterogeneous nucleation, we ultimately get more bang out of our cementitious buck. I love that. We have a wonderful article that was published by um, uh, Rex Donahue, uh, Donahue, the Concrete International crew, great people. It's called Colloidal Silica Admixture. We published it back in 2014. Haley, if you don't mind, add that, that, that link. The article, as you can see, there's a major increase at strength at 28 days. And for all my concrete engineers and, and, and formulators and ready mix providers, that day and that strength is so important because we use that to identify cement efficiency or cementitious efficiency, which is 28-day PSI, PSI over, over your total cement or your total cementitious to give us this PSI per pound or that, that bang for our cementitious buck. And what we found by using colloidal silica in this project, and you know, I might be a little bit off, but by using the colloidal silica, we went from a PSI per pound of around 9 to a PSI per pound of 12. And this is after a bunch of initial, initial research that we did at the plant where we were already taking significant amount, uh, significant amount of cement out because we were getting this higher cementitious efficiency. So again, nanosilica is a great piece of, uh, or a great tool to, to be used to increase the efficiency of our cement. Uh, that being said, a lot goes into the particle size and particle size distribution. Um, we're also going to include a link in the description below from my PhD, which goes into the different particle size distributions. Use three of them to identify how to use them to increase cementitious efficiency. So, hope you learned something. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like the video, share it with your friends and family. You never know who's gonna get a kick out of this type of information. Thanks for your time. Go concrete! Beat. That's fun!